this uh, this campaign season, this uh, election cycle. So it classifies app-based drivers as independent contractors instead of employees and provides independent contractor drivers other compensation unless certain criteria are met. So the fiscal impact is going to be minor is what it says. It's going to be like a minor increase in state income taxes paid by rideshare and delivery company drivers and investors. So what does your vote mean? If you say yes to Prop 22, a yes vote on this measure means app-based rideshare and delivery companies could hire drivers as independent contractors. Drivers could decide when, where, and how much to work but would not get standard benefits and protections that businesses must provide employees. And if you say no to Prop 22, um, this means that app-based app -based rideshare and delivery companies would have to hire drivers as employees if the courts say that a recent state law make, makes drivers employees. Drivers would have um, less choice about when, where, and how much to work but they would get standard benefits and protections that businesses must provide employees. So I think the biggest argument here, because I see a lot of commercials about how um, like single mothers who are like Uber drivers and whatnot, and they're constantly going to say yes to Prop 22 because this way I can keep my flexibility. I have kids in school, I have to do this and that, so I need flexibility with my time so that I can work while they're doing their thing and then I can be home with them when I need to is what they're saying because they don't want to have to be an employee and have to work a nine to five job and you know not be able to take their kids to school or not be able to you know do whatever they need for you know their families i think this conversation what it leaves out on the national on the uh on, on the largest stage is the tax implications for employees versus independent contractors as an independent contractor you have more uh tax benefits there are more things that you can write off but yeah. you know as an employee you're capped off on how much tax how much deductions you can take that's one side of it the second side of it is a lot of us who are entrepreneurs at heart we don't like to be uh, told when to work and when not to work we like that flexibility I personally like the flexibility to be able I think flexibility is huge our time is the one much the it is the one asset that we're not being compensated right. well for I don't care how much they pay us it's not it's not enough so the much time you can conserve for yourself the better or yes. being able to flex you know use your time more wisely be able to devote more hours of your time like when you don't need to be spending time with family to work and then when you you know do want to have your time to yourself whether it be in the middle of the day the middle of the night early in the morning whatever it is you don't have to go to work during that time but if you're an employee you have work a certain amount of hours per day you have a schedule you work on their schedule not yours and the time also right. allows you to be able to pursue side hustles and other things that are not right. necessarily related to your employment here's the thing independent being an independent contractor and being an employee has its pros and cons obviously if you're an employee because of the state of the medical you know health care and insurance and all of that you, be, you benefit from uh, tapping into group health insurance. But if you venture out on your own, you know, you might lose your health insurance. And that's not as a, that's not the fault of the companies or the corporations. This is a, this is the fault. This is a problem on the national stage um, with, you know, the healthcare reform situation. They haven't reached a solution, which I think your health insurance should be decoupled from your employment. It's it's been about time. It's been far overdue. Right. I personally think that they put that in place to keep people employed and keep you stuck at jobs. Because think about it, if if you were if it was that you can leave your job and still have health insurance, a lot of people will not stay at one job for 30 years, especially if they hate the job and they're miserable. They're they're their, their income is capped. Most people won't stay at those jobs. They'll move on and go look for something else. Um, yeah. So if we're to make progress as a nation, we have to stop stifling innovation. We have to let people free. Free people, you know? 
people have, you know, the, the people who have been successful, the entrepreneurs who have been successful in our country, even globally, the Steve Jobs of this world, Mark Zuckerberg, they didn't go to college. They stayed home and they figured it out and created these massive things that were that have made our lives easy. You know, innovation doesn't come from, you know, like restricting movement and restricting uh, innovation and restricting people from stepping out and building their dreams. So that's one. The health insurance thing needs to be decoupled from your employment, but that's a a more national conversation. But if we're talking about Prop 22 as related to the state of California, I'm all for it. Because this is not just limited to Uber drivers. This affects uh, healthcare professionals like nurses, doctors. It affects, you know, a whole different vertical, all kinds of verticals. It, you know, people have to be able to step out and pursue their dreams without being uh, without fear of uh, losing anything or retribution. Now, from the perspective of those who are worried about losing their health insurance, you know, get on the ballot on the national stage. You know, vote for the candidate who wants to give us the Medicare for all. I was I was all for uh, Bernie Sanders. You know, with, with the art, with the conversation for Bernie for uh, Med Medicare for all. I'm hoping that Joe Biden will continue that conversation and move it forward, but you know, we don't know no, until much. we'll see what happens when he, if he wins and if, you know. So that's a more national conversation. But as far as Prop 22, we need to allow people to be classified as independent contractors. I'm all for that. Yeah. I'm all for that. Okay. Uh, also, yeah. I mean, it's good to not have your um, salary capped at like one rate. But when you're working for an employer, that's usually this, what tends to happen. That's what tends to happen. You, they really only allow you to make a certain amount of money, and then sometimes people will go overtime. And if you didn't have your overtime approved, you're in trouble. So, you know, it's it's really it. I am all for Prop 22 as well. Um, and, you know, some people want to work a lot. They want to make a lot more money. They don't want to be capped. Right. And you know, and yeah. You, you, so we should allow those people to do to pursue that as well. That's right. You know, if if you're trying to make more money, have equity in whatever it is you're doing, a lot of this. Comp I mean, over 30 to 40 years, income has flattened. People haven't been making any more money for over the years, and yet the cost of living is, is you know, has skyrocketed. So, it, to be able to break out of that poverty cycle, you have to have equity in in a business. You have to be able to go. Good. What is this person doing? You have to have equity in, in your business. Yeah, yeah. You know. Companies have to be incentivized to give people equity. It's not just giving them a, a, a coupon or a tie when they hit five years or like some ridiculous, you know, it's almost insulting when someone gives you 10 years in, in, of their life like a and they give you, they give you a spinner? fake watch. <laughs> oh, they don't even give they you a watch. They give you like some like a certificate, some cheap trophy that they bought at the ninety nine cent store. It's it's it's, it's 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 it doesn't make sense. If I was building my business for ten years, I, not only would I have equity in the business, you know, that I can leave for my children, I would have also kept most of the money. Yeah, and that's pretty much what matters more than a certificate. So as long as corporations are not having that debate about giving their employees equity, especially their tenured employees, you can't expect people to stay there. You can't expect people to, the millennials, they don't care about your lo stupid loyalties. You know, it's like you're telling someone to give your company five, 10, 20, 30 years of their life for nothing but a miserly paycheck, crumbs. Okay, and then you want to leave, the, they, they snatch your health insurance from you. The whole thing is just backwards. Okay, so that's my rant on that. I think that people should have the freedom to, to move around, to be independent contractors, to start their own businesses, uh, 
you can't you can't require I don't think the state should mandate corporations to offer health insurance to independent contractors. That's not fair to the businesses. They're gonna run out. They're gonna they're gonna run out of business. You know, you, you, imagine a small healthcare agency or a small business being required to pay tens of thousands of dollars for group health insurance for not people who are not giving them 40 hours of their time. So it's, it's not fair to the business owner. Because the truth is, the people who suffer the most are the small businesses, not the Ubers and the Kaisers. And the big, it's not the big corporations that will suffer, it's the small companies. So they shouldn't be required to offer health insurance and the ability to have, to, be, to take on independent contractor status should not be uh, taken away either. So there's gotta be a fine balance there somewhere. But knowing the way politics is, there's never a fine balance. It's always like extremes. Yeah. They never solve the root cause of the problem, so they end up putting band-aids on it and having all these bills on the ballot that don't actually solve the root cause of the problem until we actually have those real debates. There needs to be Medicare for all on the national stage and federally. First of all, when there's medical, medical care, Medicare for all federally, then it wouldn't even matter what status you are. <laughs> because I think the people who are having this conversation are just trying to protect the benefits. You know, that, yeah. that they get from being Actually, employed. Yeah, I get that. So, if you have Medicare, then you wouldn't even care whether they call you independent contractor, employee, servant. <laughs> you, call, you label it whatever you want. I have my health insurance and I leave whenever I want. That's, that's what matters. People are, you know, you have to... They, they, we have to provide people safety nets. You know, that's why we pay taxes. We don't pay taxes just to, uh, you know, fund wars. We pay taxes to improve our life, improve our education system, healthcare, social services, you know, infrastructure. We need to modernize our infrastructure and put people to work. So I vote yes on Prop 22.